In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to solder by showing you the tools you'll need and some of the techniques you can use to solder some basic RC components. To keep yourself safe, wearing gloves, safety glasses, and even a mask or respirator is highly recommended. And you should always make sure that you have a clear and organized workstation in a well-ventilated area. Looking at the basic tools required for soldering, you'll obviously need a soldering iron. You can spend as much money as you'd like, but you can honestly just get by with the inexpensive irons. The one that I've been using for years is a 40 watt Weller soldering iron. I picked it up on Amazon for around $20 and it came with a few tips and even some cheap solder to get you going. This setup works just fine and is able to get the job done, especially if you're only soldering once every few months like I do. Higher end soldering stations are nice because you can adjust the temperature of your iron based on the size of whatever you're soldering. Regardless of the soldering iron you choose, you're typically going to want a smaller chisel tip for working with RC vehicles. The flat spots have more surface area and allow you to heat up larger objects while you can use the corners of the tip for more detailed soldering jobs. Depending on the soldering setup you go with, you might need a soldering iron stand and to keep the tip of your iron elevated and off of your work surface. To clean the tip of your iron, you're also going to need a wet sponge. When it comes to the solder itself, typically you're going to want a rosin core solder. It's just easier to work with, feeds into the wire really nice, and it should eliminate the need for soldering flux. The flux is a liquid or paste that you basically put onto the wire that you're soldering to help the solder soak in. The rosin core solder I use is from Mandela Crafts. I picked up a small spool of it on Amazon. It's their one millimeter thick version, and it's actually lead free, which is nice. Although lead solder can be a little easier to work with than lead free solder, the lead free is much safer to use, so it's all I buy now. You'll also need some sort of cutting tool, so that could be side cutters, a hobby knife, or scissors. I actually prefer to use Lexan scissors. The last thing you'll need is some heat shrink tubing to cover up your soldering. You can find kits that come with a variety of sizes, just like this one, on websites like Amazon and eBay. In order to actually shrink this tubing, you'll most likely want either a heat gun or a lighter. You can technically use the side of your soldering iron if you're in a pinch as well, it just takes a little longer. Really quick, here's a few optional tools that I'd recommend to help make the soldering process easier. Soldering jigs are extremely helpful. The one I use is from Intigy, and it's basically just a big clamp with a bunch of holes to hold bullet connectors and all of your most common battery connectors. Helping hands are another great tool you can use. Most of the time, they're just a couple of clips that you can adjust and position to keep everything in place. A cheaper way to do it is just to wrap a rubber band around a set of pliers, and that will keep enough tension to hold whatever you need. An extra set of pliers is always handy for holding wires as they heat up so you're not burning your fingers. Diving right into the soldering process, you'll want to make sure that the tip of your wire is either parallel to your work surface or slightly pointed down towards it. This will prevent solder from running further into the wire and stiffening up the end of it. You're going to start by stripping the insulation off the end of the wire that you're going to be soldering. There are wire stripping tools, but I typically just grab some Lexan scissors and lightly cut the outside. Now we need to pre-tin our wire. This is basically just adding solder to both items before soldering them together. Before and after you use your soldering iron, always make sure to wipe it off off with your wet sponge so it's clean. Then I'm just going to take some solder and feed it onto the end of my soldering iron tip. Touch the tip of the soldering iron to the wire and then start feeding into the iron. As the wire heats up and the solder soaks in a little bit, you can eventually start feeding your solder directly into the wire. I usually like to add as much as I possibly can. Now we can work on tinning our plug that we're gonna be soldering this wire to. With the plug, we are basically going to do the exact same thing. Clean the tip of your iron, feed some fresh solder into your iron, and then just touch the tip of your iron to the tab on the plug. Before we solder the wire to the plug, you'll wanna make sure that you throw some heat shrink on the wire because once the plug is soldered you won't be able to slip it on there and that's a step I forget to do all the time. Now we just line the end of the wire up to the plug we're going to be soldering it to, get our iron cleaned up, feed some solder into the tip of it, and now we can just hold the iron down and heat the solder up just enough to where it melts both the solder on the wire and the solder on the plug. Once that's done, we can bring the heat shrink up and take our lighter or heat gun to it. To ensure that this is gonna hold up long term, you can always check by pulling on the wire and adding some tension to see if it breaks off. If you're using lead solder, you'll wanna make sure that your soldering joints are nice and shiny because if they're cloudy or dull, the solder was too cold and it's probably not going to hold up. With lead-free solder, your joints will usually not look very shiny. 
If you hold your soldering iron on the wire and plug for too long, you're gonna end up melting the plastic around the tabs on your plug. To avoid this, you can grab a spare opposite connector and plug it into the connector that you're soldering so if the plastic does melt a little, the tabs will stay in place. When you're soldering batteries, there are a few extra precautions that you should take. When you're going to change the connector and are cutting through the wires to get the old one off, you have to cut one wire at a time. If you try and cut both wires at the same time, it's dangerous because you're going to arc the wires since you're completing the circuit. Once you have one wire cut, just try to get it as far away from the other wire as possible. You can tape it or rubber band it around the battery itself. Now you can go through and pretty much do the exact same steps until we need to solder the other wire. Now that the wire we soldered is covered up in heat shrink, we shouldn't have to worry about it touching the next wire that we're going to be soldering. If you aren't able to cover up the first wire with heat shrink yet, like with some plugs, they have these plastic shrouds, you can always put some electrical tape around the other connection so you're not accidentally bumping it. One more thing I wanna walk you guys through quick is how to solder bullet connectors. On each bullet, there is typically a hole on the side where the wire feeds into. So place your connector in a jig or vise and then take the corner or tip of a clean side soldering iron and press it into that hole that's in the side of the bullet I mentioned earlier. And now you can start feeding solder through the top hole of the bullet connector. Then really quick after you're done with that, keep holding the soldering iron to the bullet connector so the solder stays hot and grab your tinned wire and slowly insert the tip of it into the top of the bullet connector. Once again, you can pull the connector just to see if it's going to stay there and slip some heat shrink over the top. With male bullet connectors, there's usually a little ledge that you're going to want to bring the end of your heat shrink to, but on female bullet connectors, you're just going to want to cover the outside entirely since that's what's going to be slipping over the male portion. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, smash that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.